Hello, everyone. I believe we're live. Yep, we are good to go. Okay, how are you guys? Good. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. So, welcome everyone to our first uh, CyberWise chat of the season of 2021. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm Diana Graber of CyberWise, here with Dr. Pamela Rutledge of the Media Psychology Research Center. Um, also joining us is Arias Collins. She's our community manager, and she'll be fielding your questions and populating the chat box, so make sure you open it, with any of the links that we mentioned today. Um, and those of you who have joined us before for our chats, welcome back. Um, you know that what we try to do here is talk about current tech topics, but look at them through the lens of media psychology, which, which is why we have Dr. Rutledge with us today. So without further ado, let's get started. Wow, what a year already, Pam, right? Kind of exciting. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> a lot of people not sorry to see 2020 go. Cool. Right? Yeah. But, I'm, I'm wondering about 2021 at this point. I don't know. It's crazy. I know. Keep our fingers crossed. But, you know, I think it, having such an unusual year makes doing usual things seem kind of a little bit strange, right? So this idea of a New Year's resolution, what we're supposed to do every year, we take stock of the last year. I don't know anybody who really wants to take stock of 2020 rather than just close the door on it. But it really, I know, right? But, so, but, and I felt exhausted, the idea of making some resolutions. But then I thought what I really need to do is think about my goals in this sort of new normal. I mean, I don't know about you, but you know, we're having to come to grips with what we've been doing, what we may be able to do, and then wonder about all the changes that have come about because we have all these new behaviors. So I guess that, you know, my, my soapbox would be, rather than start with the resolutions like you see all over the internet, you know, cut down on your phone time, is to think about what it is you want to have happen this year. You know, is our relationships your goal? Excellent. Is time management, is productivity, I mean, it's always my goal, but, you know, and then make sure that the resolutions are actually tactics to a goal rather than just standalone for no reason. Because if they're just tactics with no anchoring, you aren't going to keep them. I mean, there's no incentive because they don't have any larger meaning. So that's, that's sort of my, you know, pop psych moment here uh, is thinking about resolutions from yeah. a larger view. Yeah, that's such a good thing to do because I read this morning that most of us make resolutions, but only 80% of resolutions, uh, actually 80% of resolutions are lost after the first week of the year, which is crazy. That's like seven days, you know? So I think that you're right. Think of the big picture. Um, and I think also technology plays such a big part of this right now because of where we are in our moment is that we have to rely on technology to do school often with our kids or to do work or to connect with others that we can't see in person or to get our news, which is crazy right now. And so if we can focus today on just maybe how to streamline that to make us all <laughs> right. not go crazy and have technology be our servant and help us be more focused and centered during these really crazy times. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Personally, I kind of chose this topic because I feel scattered technology wise. I have things coming at me from so many different angles and I feel like Personally, I need to be more centered and focused on how I use technology. So I think I'm going to learn a lot today. So um, we actually, like we do every time, we put this out as a question to our CyberWise community. And we actually got some questions um, this year. And the first one comes from Jenny Larkin from New York. Um, I feel so overwhelmed by emails, notifications, tech messages, etc. How can I simplify all the distractions that come from my cell phone and laptop? Amen. <laughs> Amen. No kidding. I think it's important to remember there's sort of two approaches here, right? Just like in sports, you either play offense or defense. And if you're playing defense, you get to cho choose things, right? You choose what notifications you get. Every app wants you to have notifications. I just updated my system software, turned on every notification to every app I have, and I've spent two days turning them back off. You get to choose. Be ruthless. Turn those babies off. Think of it as self-care. And the second is he's taking these little micro steps to cut down on cut down on clutter. After the holidays, you're going to get buckets of emails from companies where you went to look, you know, to do your shopping, right? They're following you all over the internet. Every day, pick one, unsubscribe. There's a link at the bottom that says, you know, uh, unsubscribe link. Take that action. Don't just delete it. Unsubscribe, then delete it. 
and you'll be starting to make a little progress little by little. I'm also a huge fan of spam blockers on my phone. Yeah. I actually have two of them installed. I use RoboKiller and Haya, but No More Robo is also another good one. And unless you're a real estate agent and you have to answer the phone no matter who calls, highly recommend getting a spam blocker. Yeah, those are great. Yeah, well, should I, you, you want to talk about defense or should I go on? Should I talk about offense before? Well, we... Let's do defense first because I had okay. a couple of things to add to that. Um, and I love the idea of disabling notifications. I know sometimes I feel like I'm going to jump out of my skin when things beep. I, I've turned everything off because that drives me nuts. Um, and it's super easy to do. And I think Arius might be able to help me here in the chat box. But OK, so to disable it on any iOS system is really easy. You just go to your settings app select notifications. Um, every app on your phone has its own notifications and they're subdivided by the place where they appear, whether it's your lock screen, your notification center, or via banners. Um, and you can have the option to eliminate all these notifications for the app, turn them off, don't even use them is what I suggest. That's my favorite. And then, yeah, Android even makes it easier. They have a shortcut when a notification comes through on your phone, you can hold it down for a moment and the gear icon appears, allowing you to mute all your alerts coming from that app right then and there. So you don't even have to go into your settings. You can do it every time they pop up. But this is a really important thing to do with your children too. Um, I know this from teaching Zoom classes to kids. I, I can hear their phones beeping and whatever, you know? <laughs> And like, imagine these kids are trying to concentrate on school and they can't, they're trying to do homework and they've got other things coming at them. They can't handle the multitasking. They've got to focus. So do have your children turn off their notifications as well. Right. And you know, there actually is no such thing as multitasking. There's task switching, but humans cannot cognitively multitask. Yeah. So who, when your 10 year old tells you they're multitasking, they're not. Yeah, you know, I'm glad that you mentioned that because that's actually a lesson that we do in cyber civics with in the third level of cyber civics and it's a really fun game. I'm going to tell you what it is so parents can do it at home, but I have the kids write down um, the numbers like one to 20, one, two, three, four, you know, 20, and then the, the letters A, B, C, D, blah, blah, blah. And I, and I time them to see how long it takes them to do it and they do great. And then the second time that we do it, they have to write the number one and then the letter A the number two, and then the letter B. So they're actually switched mm -hmm. tasking between the first line and the second line. And again, I time them. And what they discover is it takes them twice as long and they're less neat, they're less effective. And that shows them, <laughs> shows all of us that none of us can switch tasks as well as we think we can. So there's right. a little lesson. It's <laughs> nice to think that we have superpowers, but yeah, we don't. Know, sorry. <laughs> Um, I was going to answer uh, also to um, that first question that we got as far as all the stuff coming at you. And what I would say is, and this is my goal for the year, my big picture goal, is try to be really good at a few things. Like no one can use a million apps well. Like pick a few that you really need to use and really dive in and learn them. Google tools for me is the one I have to use for work and for teaching and all that. And I need to be better at it. So. Um, I was going to tell everyone, and I think Aries is going to put this in the chat box, but on the Cyber Civics website at the very top, we have free resources for teachers. There's stuff for parents in there too. If you click that, it will take to, you to a page where the very first thing you'll find is a visual guide to C Google Classroom, Docs, Drive, Meet, Sheet, Slides. It's so awesome. They're like visual guides. They're just so easy to follow, and you will learn how to use each of these tools super well. So I would say all of us use Google and you know, whether we like it or not, learn how to use that well. Um, Google also offers really great free training for this. It's called the Google Workspace Learning Center. I believe Arius will share that as well. But it allows you to learn how to use your calendar better and to sync it with others. I need to do that training, believe it or not. <laughs> I got like 10 calendars going. So Well, you know, Diana, I mean, that's, that's such a great resource. And I would say to all you parents out there, forward that link to your kids' teachers, because yeah. just because you're great in a classroom doesn't mean you know how to organize content for online. That doesn't mean you're a bad teacher. It just means it's a completely different skill set. Right. And if you can see some good examples of an online classroom organized well, it'll, uh, it would really help their delivery and it'll help you figure out what your kids are supposed to be doing, which I think is really the hardest part. 
So true. Um, and then for those of us who don't have kids, it just or need to organize as far as work goes. There's another super good app that I just learned about. And I just downloaded it myself. It's called 24 Me Personal Assistant. And I believe Aris will put this in the chat as well. Um, it puts everything related to your schedule in one place. That's your calendar, your to-do list, your notes, your personal accounts. It generates reminders. It syncs with your other devices. And what I liked about it, it's really pretty. It's so it's super user friendly. I, I, I love good graphics. The simplicity, it's beautifully designed. Um, they have a seven day free trial. And even if you decide to pay for it, it's only $35 a year. So I think that's super reasonable. So another good yeah, one. That's, that's a pretty, that's a pretty good deal in the, in the world of apps. You know, yeah, if, I, can deep organize I also it. like cozy, which is C O Z I, which is a really great family organizer. It also has good graphics. That's my criteria. Yeah. My first criteria for whether I use an app is usability and whether or not I think it's attractive. But the other thing that I would recommend to people because security is becoming such a bigger issue, get a password manager. They're easy to use. You only have to remember one password to get into it, but then you can have really aggressively difficult passwords for all the websites where your security is matters and where your information is at risk. So, you know, my personal favorite is one password. That's not the only one. It's just the one I'm used to, but check them out and see what works for you. Do you um, want to hear my favorite password manager? It's called One Notebook. Oh, can you see it? I gotta put, oh, where is it? You guys can't, okay, it's called One Notebook. <laughs> I, I really recommend this to every family. And the reason I do that is one year, one of those password managers got hacked. And this won't get hacked unless someone breaks into my house and steals it off my desk. But I think no, it's just important for families to actually write down their passwords and have it in one place where everyone can share it. Because if there's an emergency and you need to get in your kid's Instagram account, for example, you want to have that handy. Um, right. So easy to yeah, write. Yeah, mine would be about 400 pages long, I fear. But um, yeah, mine's pretty messy, but, you know, it's worth having. Right. Well, you know, and as, a, as an ancillary to that, make sure you're backing up your stuff. Yeah. Right. You know, whether it's Dropbox or Box.com or a hard drive or something. Um, you know, I have my password for my one password in the back of my notebook so someone could find it if they needed access to all of my yeah. stuff. But you really do want to have backup because nothing is worse in terms of your time than losing your files, especially if you're their work files or your kids, you know, schedule. Yeah. So I'm going to stop us for a second because I see Arius furiously typing over there. Are there any questions that we should address or do we need to move on to the next? I think we're ready to move on. Okay, just mm -hmm. don't, just break on in if you have something. Uh, I will, on. yeah. So we got this one from Lori in Portland. I have three kids, one in high school, one in middle school, and a second grader, oh boy. All are home and online for school. How can I help them keep track of their schoolwork? Yeah, well, I know that we're having tech topics here, but I suggest that you buy a paper planner. Yeah. Just like your one notebook, the, everyone learns in different ways. The act of reading and writing it down, copying, increases your, um, the, your memory of it and also forces you to think about the scheduling of it. You actually see it in its entirety. So it's a really important tool, even if it isn't in detail. Get your kids in the habit of writing down their homework assignments in one list super important now that these classrooms are a little bit disjointed with google classroom and you know the french teachers over here and the you know english teachers over there and you don't know who's doing what put it all in one place use a pencil yeah i'm a big fan of writing things down too i think it has the extra benefit when you write it down it goes into your brain i don't know just the physical act of doing right. it there's got to be psychology behind that right pam right there is <laughs> Just when you write things down, it, it's, it's more indel indelible on your head. Um, but if you like to use tech tools, well, a couple things. Um, most schools, I think, are using Google Classroom or similar platforms. And again, get to know it. You know, I, I know as a teacher, that's where I post my assignments. I had to chastise an eighth grade class today because a lot of them did not turn in their work. And it's super simple for parents to log in and see when homework is due. Get to know that. That makes your life a lot easier if you know how to use the tools they're using. Um, and then there's one tool that's recommended every place I looked. It's called My Homework Student Planner. Um, it's a free for a basic account, and then it's only $4.99 for the whole year for an upgraded account. 
and it's, it claims it's really good for forgetful students. It can be a replacement for a physical planner for kids who like to use online tools. They can put in um, their test dates, due dates, homework assignments, anything that they need to remember in regards to school. They can keep class track of their class schedule so they're not forgetting anything that they need. So um, that seems to be the most recommended app for kids to keep track of their schoolwork. And so again, that, it's my homework student planner, I believe. Is that multi-user? So if you, so a parent and a child could both log into the same account, so a parent could um, I believe so. Support yeah. the child. I mean, obviously, you shouldn't do that without talking to your kid first because you don't want to violate right. their privacy. But no, they their obligations is very helpful just in terms of planning yeah. your own time, much less um, helping them plan theirs. Exactly. Yeah. But again, I think given the two, I'm the fan of the write it down on something physical planner like you are, Pam. Okay. Um, all right. Any questions, Arias? Should we move on? Alan. Okay. And remember, if you guys want us to stop and answer anything, please put it in the chat box and we're happy sure. to do that. Um, but in the meantime, question three, I know there are apps and tools that can help you manage the time you spend online. Can you recommend any of them? This is from my dad of three. What do you well, think about that, I mean, time management? I, I, well, I, you know, get back to my uh, one popular soap bar is before you worry about controlling the time think about what the t you're doing with the time because the, the actual minutes isn't the most important judge of the quality yeah. or of the time you're spending or the content. So measure what you're doing before you start making judgments, limiting it. I recommend keeping a media journal for a few days, something super simple. But what's really important isn't just device and activity, but how you're feeling and why you're right big difference between somebody who feels compelled to do something and somebody who's just using face because they're bored but you don't know that unless you're making the notation of why you're doing it I didn't know what to do so Facebook or I was tired on Facebook to relax those are completely different uses good waste time bad so that journal can make a huge difference and you know we can post a um, I'm unstable here we can we'll post a template <laughs> You see, stable. I know. I, I try not to take that personally whenever it tells me I'm, I'm, I'm unstable. But we can post a template of what a media journal should look um, on the CyberWise website so that uh, people can, can use it. But it, 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 just a few days of it will make all the difference. And yeah. you can start using tools like Moment on iOS or Quality Moments on Android to provide some little tweaks and control of what you're, but start with what, why you're doing yeah. what you're doing before you make time judgments. Yeah, I, I think I totally agree with you, Pam, because we're in a weird moment right now where we need technology more than we do usually. And the other thing is um, kids are feeling really isolated right now. And so a lot of times they're using social media and games to connect with their peers and we have to give them, cut them a little slack for that. Um, and just so um, I tell, talk to parent groups about this a lot, but all of our apps and tools have free ways to track time these days. Apple offers it, even, even the apps themselves, like TikTok, for example, which every kid I know uses pretty much, um, but they have something called family pairing, where a, a, a parent can pair their phone or their account with their child's TikTok um, account, and you can actually manage the time that they spend on the app. So I think a lot of the apps are offering that now. So don't you know, I know there's third parties that offer it, but don't overlook your free tools. Um, but I, I do, I do want to give a little pitch here because we spent a little time over the holidays revamping something that we think will really help in this regard. And it's our um, CyberWise technology agreement, which will be posted by tomorrow. We revamped it over the holidays to make it much more comprehensive. And it's an agreement that helps families come to terms with each other on how much time they'll spend online, how they'll spend their time online. It's super important to make this a conversation. And so in our agreement, there's all these conversation topics and things you fill in with each child so that you can agree on the stuff. And some of the things that are now in our um, agreement are passwords, which you just talked about, who owns the phone, privacy, reputation, civility, how you'll act, what social media accounts you're gonna be allowed or you agree to allow your child to use, the settings they'll use, which is something that can help them with their time, 
the friends that they'll choose and how to ask for help and how to use critical thinking skills. So it's really long, but it's worth the conversation right now. And it'll really help you with this topic of time and a lot of other things as well. You know, Diana, something I think is really important in that, and, and I'm sure it's part of your document, is to recognize the child has a sense of autonomy with technology yeah. and to be respectful of them. Privacy isn't just about sharing your data. Privacy is about their sense of whether you're stalking them, you know, as a parent, that you're giving them an appropriate amount of privacy. Obviously, that changes whether they're 8, 10, you know, 17, but it's really important to lay out those ground rules of how you will respect them if you expect them to respect your wishes so that it actually is a contract. It's an agreement. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I learned, I learned that myself and I'm sure Arias does too, because she teaches cyber civics as well, but working with kids online, like they're smart if you give them the tools and the education. And we've been talking a lot about this idea of, you know, getting kicked off social media and all that. And they're like, you know, we sh adults should have better critical thinking skills when they use social media and they should be able to think about these things. And that's what we want our kids to start being their own best, uh, you know, their best selves online, just like they are offline. And so we don't, we can't be there 24 seven to watch what they're doing online. So to give them this education, these tools so they can start doing them for themselves. And it goes back to the question of time. Time is the same thing. You can set, all the rules you want, but your child is often alone with their device and has to find, find a way to keep balance with technology on their own terms. Yeah, that's, that's so important because the app, the technology, all the stuff, a year from now is going to look completely different. Yeah. But if they have the skills to think through what's safe, what's private, what they're sharing, how to use it, then it's transferable no matter no matter what happens, they have a good foundation. And so really, you're not just teaching them how to drive a car, you're teaching them how to drive all cars on all roads. Exactly. Well said. <laughs> um, all right, so we're gonna go on to number four. Um, between coronavirus and the political news, the stress I am feeling, as well as my kids, is almost overwhelming. Are there apps that can help with us? Sandy from Milwaukee. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I think you'd be unusual if you weren't stressed right now, especially coming off the holidays. Holidays already have a, you know, a wrap for being a stressful time because you're trying to navigate all this. Now we're trying to navigate it all socially distanced and, you know, people not getting to come home because they're waiting for their COVID test to come back, you know, and, and things like that. So it's, that's normal. So you should, first of all, if you're stressed, you're normal. So start there. Um, and then there's sort of, again, this is a sort of an offensive defensive play, right? The first thing is cut down on your digital junk food, right? I always think of it as you've got a spidey sense about what's making you feel good, what's making you not feel good. If you've seen the same news article over and over and you just keep reading it, stop. Be starting to set limits on yourself when you recognize that something is, is increasing your negative emotions or your aggravation. I do that all the time. I look at a headline, I go, I really don't want to hear about that. Right? Nothing, me knowing about that is going to change my life. So you can make judgments. But the other is sort of proactively. There's a lot of things you can do to redirect that. Stress, stress isn't redirect that into something else. Physiologically, stress is the same as excitement, right? Rapid heartbeat, shortness of breath, all of these things. But if we interpret it as stress, it can have negative consequences. But if we can put it towards something that has a positive outcome, it actually can increase performance. So refocus that stress energy, exercise, no one size fits all exercise, but um, there's a lot of different ones from Nike Run Club to Run Keeper and Fitness Buddy. I know you use some things, um, in what you do, Diana, meditation. If you're not a sports person, use meditation, headspace, actually has now running meditations because they partnered with Nike Run Club. Popify, mm -hmm. Breathe to Relax. There's a whole bunch of them. They're quite good. Some of them are free. And those are opportunities to be mindfulness, increase your mindfulness. But that's also what sports does. In other words, everything you're doing is taking it out of this worrying about the future, worrying about the past, and putting you into the present. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so I'm glad you brought up sports because I did mention an app that I use. I'm an avid mountain biker, as those of you who know, who know me, and I use Strava, as does all my friends that also love to mountain bike. And I like it because there's no politics, there's no, str everything there is regarding our passion and happy conversation regarding that. And I bring that up because um, last year I participated in the Wall Street Journal Tech Live event. And what I learned was that these um, apps like Strava that are based around passion um, are super popular right now. And so what I would say is, you know, streamline your life and think about the things you love that bring you peace and happiness. There's probably a community and there's probably an app for that, as they say. And what I learned right. at the conference was one of the biggest communities that has an app evidently are people that do, um, what was it called? Quilting, uh, quilting circles. Oh, interesting. So again, I, it's not funny that that's one of the biggest apps out there. So what I would say is they call them affinity based apps. Find something you love, connect with those people, and that will really filter out all of the negativity of things you don't need to hear about when you need a break. Um, and Pam, you bring up such a good point about stress. You know, current events are really stressful. And if they're stressing us out, I guarantee to you that you're, they're stressing out kids that are seeing the same news on TikTok and Instagram and all that. And I, I heard about it this morning from the eighth graders I taught. You know, they're seeing a lot of stuff on TikTok and Instagram, it's freaking them out. And they don't have adults there in the room to really give it context. So be aware of what they're seeing on these apps. And if they do need a little break from that, help them find that time away from their devices. Um, and there's a lot of apps out there that can help you um, if you are feeling stress or worse, if you're feeling depression. Um, two really good ones that I learned about this morning, Talkspace Online Therapy, I believe um, Arias will put the link on there, but it's a, it, it provides confidential support of a licensed therapist through a HIPAA compliant app. Super inexpensive to connect with a therapist right now um, when you can't go in, in real life. And then there's a similar service to that called BetterHelp. It's betterhelp.com. So if you or your children are feeling undue stress right now, normal depression is kind of normal right now, sadly, um, please look online for help if you can't go somewhere in person. Yeah, I think, you know, what you were talking about, Diana, too, all of this information coming at us, you know, there isn't an app for that necessarily, but it does take a certain amount of skills to know how to deal with all that information, which I think is what we're going to talk about Oh, next yeah. <laughs> time is how to talk to your kids about people who get blackballed from Twitter. Yeah, so we've been talking a lot about this offline because it's very fascinating right now what's happening social media, um, finally, in my, in my view, but we'll talk about that, uh, are, is kicking people off using them because of different violations to their terms of use. So that's our topic for two weeks from now. As you know, we do these tech talks or these cyberwise chats every two weeks at noon. So our next one will be in exactly two weeks at noon. Um, and the topic is getting off social media, how to talk to kids about current events. So there's sure to be a lot more hoopla happening between now and then. So we will be no, watching kidding. carefully and making notes of how to talk about it. Um, if you have any topics or questions you'd like to, us to address in the meantime, please send them to support at cybercivics.com. Um, we will definitely uh, address them and it's going to be a big topic. So, but I do want to um, give us a few more minutes before our half hour is up today to um, talk about any apps we've missed, Pam. I think there were a couple other ones you mentioned that you thought were really useful this time of year. Well, you know, the only thing I would say is I love that you use Stava to stay connected with your other, you know, with your sports friends, right? And I, of course, am not hardy enough to actually ride a bike on dirt, <laughs> but I'm a... <laughs> but I'm a big fan of the, a Peloton bike. The cool thing about Peloton is you don't have to buy the bike to use their app. Their app is very inexpensive. They also have a 90 day free trial, which I recommend, but you can tell when someone you know is in the same class as you, even when it's an on-demand class. So I actually have a couple of different appointments. I ride actually with my dentist on Saturdays. Cool. And so, awesome. and I, I know, right? And then I ride with a student and another colleague uh, on, on Fridays and we, we negotiate oh, back and okay. forth by text. We pick a, you know, a playlist that some instructor has, but I can see them on there. I can hype them from my bike. 
That's really nice, especially right now during COVID, because it's hard for some of us to do big group rides, or we really shouldn't be doing big group rides right now. So um, it's nice yeah, to be yeah. able to do it virtually. So that's a really yeah, good social thing. distancing, right, from miles yeah. away. Yeah, that's nice. So, um, all right. So, Arius, anything else that we forgot or that you need to let us know that's in the chat box? No, I, you guys covered everything beautifully. I feel so much more empowered now um, after hearing your discussion. I think it's, it's going to be so helpful. So thank you both for including me. Thank you. Oh, of course, always. and Arius will be, she's our uh, community person, so you'll be seeing her posts on social media. We'll also put this video on Facebook in, this afternoon. And those of you who join will be sending you our new TEF agreement that we're very excited about, and you'll also be hearing about it on social media. So. All right, thank you both hey. for your time today. And I'm really looking forward to our next conversation. Right. It's gonna be a juicy one. So hopefully we'll see everyone back then. So thank you, right. have a thank great day. Yeah. Here's to All a right. good 2021. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Bye. Cheers, bye-bye.